हरी ओम क्षण मित्र क्षंवरुणा क्षण्णो भवत्वर्य क्षण्णो इंद्रो बृहस्पति क्षण्णो विष्णु रुक्रम नमो ब्रह्मणे नमस्ते वायो वायुमेव प्रत्यक्ष प्रत्यक्षम ब्रह्मासी तमेव प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्म वदिष्या ऋत वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या तन्मावत तद्वक्तावत अवत मवत वक् सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर कर्वाहे तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषावे ओ शातिशातिशा Namaskar and good afternoon to everyone. It's a really, truly an honor for us at the VIF to have such scholars, Vidwan, in the subject of uh, mathematics with us today uh, to talk about uh, the significance of uh, algebraic mathematics. ये शायद पहली बार हमारी हिस्ट्री में ऐसा हो रहा है कि एक ऐसा संस्थान जिसमें हर रोज हम मारपीट की बात करते हैं फॉरेन पॉलिसी स्ट्रेटजी डिफेंस एंड सो ऑन उसमें आज हम वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स के ऊपर चर्चा कर रहे हैं एंड दिस इज नॉट समथिंग दैट इज सडनली वी डिसाइडेड टू डू दैट मीरा जी के साथ हमारी पहले भी काफी चर्चा डिस्कशन हुई है कि किस प्रकार हम भारतीय सभ्यता को आगे बढ़ाएं उसके बारे में एक सोच और चिंतन पैदा करें और मोर इम्पोर्टेंट उसमें एक अवेयरनेस पैदा करें और इंटरेस्ट पैदा हो खासकर जो हमारी युवा पीढ़ी है so as a result of this discussions uh, some months ago we decided to have a series of events and uh, we decided on uh, uh, vedic uh, mathematics uh, as the first uh, uh, event of this kind and why i thought uh, the, the idea of vedic uh, mathematics came to me because uh, i think during covid she had organized one online uh, uh, meeting on uh, dating uh, the mahabharata she herself is an expert on mahabharata uh, you all know her aur usme ek jyotish ke bare mein aur mathematics ke bare mein bahut gehri charcha hui so uh, we discussed and we thought that uh, vedic mathematics which now people are talking about quite a lot is one area that we should uh, try and popularize it and this can be a continuous effort so that's how this uh, significance of uh, mathematics uh, vedic mathematics personally i came across by chance uh, this uh, book by jagat guru shri bharati krishna tirad ji i think it was published probably in 50s or 60s i don't know exactly when but uh, i came across that book in uh, around 90s when i was myself writing a book on uh, 
कटिंग एज डिस्कवरीज तो उस सिलसिले में मैं शोध में मुझे वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स के ऊपर एक किताब उनकी नजर आई विच आई थिंक स्टिल इज अ क्लासिक एंड प्रॉब्लली फाउंटेन हेड ऑफ ऑल द वर्क दैट हैज बीन डन ऑन मैथमेटिक्स I was trying to find that in my personal library this morning, but I couldn't find it. But I'm sure all of you know about it. But I would like to show that book uh, also here. Or, usme jab maine padha, when I read that, and uh, uh, it's really truly fascinating and amazing. Before that, one had heard of uh, Shakuntala, the human computer, how fast she could calculate and so on. that was a you know she was a wonder no doubt and uh, also raised india's profile all over but vedic mathematics which i think has been written even much before uh, uh, shakuntala's name was known and it is such a systematic way of uh, dealing with uh, some uh, uh, very uh, complex uh, mathematical problems essentially to do with the uh, the calculations and that too in a fast and very rapid manner And that is really a, a wonder, and I think people are still wondering about it. That how, in about fifteen or sixteen sutras of mathematics, which uh, that book uh, enumerates, and uh, some of these names like Ekadik uh, Ekadikin Purvena or Nikhilam or Uthav Triyadhyam Trivab Triyagbhayam Triyagbhayam and many others, how these can be uh, applied. to simple issues like uh, adding multiplying dividing etc but also to irrational numbers to simultaneous equations uh, linear equations and many other areas of mathematics which are normally taught either in the late school or in uh, college uh then of course this is the uh, era of uh, multiple choice all kinds of exams people take and they have to do these calculations very fast so some people caught on to that and uh, try to commercialize it ki bhai aap vedic mathematics ke nikhilam aur is prakar ke sutra agar aap seekh le to aapki uh, number jo hai aapke marks aapko zyada milenge and that's what actually many people are doing also so that's the practical side of it then i think uh, uh, because mathematics with as you know interest in india mein kafi rehta hai uh we have have this uh, thousands of years since the vedic times as the vedic mathematics says we have interest in mathematics so a lot of people are doing it for just for uh, enjoyment and inter- entertainment etc and i think that's the best way to get introduced uh, to mathematics normally the way we teach mathematics uh, in our schools uh if you are not frightened by class 5 then you are suddenly frightened by mathematics by class 8 and i think a lot of youngsters are sitting here they are all here uh, from uh, social sciences which means there are the frightened children most of them <laughs> those who did not want to do mathematics or could not do mathematics because it was it's not taught properly it is the core subject for anyone to and it's a most wonderful subject and it can be the most enjoyable and right through your life ab jagat guru shankar acharya ji aise log agar wo kitab likh rahe hain to kuch to isme ho gaya but we have all forgotten and we don't teach it properly uh, uh, whereas if you started with mathematics right from class 1 or earlier when your child goes to nursery school etc usko thoda sa ek naye dhang se ek numbers ko kaise deal karna hai handle karna hai ye aap usko sikha de if you uh, introduce that uh, there will be interest of course it doesn't mean that we don't learn other mathematics that is uh, not at all uh, the uh, but this is that part where i think the mathematics can be far more uh, interesting but uh, on a, a more uh, serious note uh, there is this uh, very civilizational and cultural aspect uh and to uh this mathematics india can hold its head high because uh, uh not only because we uh, invented zero and our uh, numerals etc are taken by others that's of course a story known to everyone but some very serious mathematics has been done for centuries 
Uh, Pythagoras theorem, for instance, uh, uh, much before Pythagoras, uh, uh, it, you know, dabbled with it. It's not that other civilization didn't have an idea, but certainly India also had. And then, of course, uh, Bhaskar, Bhaskaracharya, Bhaskar, and uh, Aryabhatta, and so on. Aryabhatta is uh, very uh, famous. Uh, so we have, have we have had this uh, interest in mathematics for a, a very long time, and I think uh, even, of course, the civilizations like Egyptians, Babylonians, etc., also had uh, interest in mathematics, but so did Indians. But the point is that uh, we have not written that history of uh, uh, science and technology uh, in ancient India. And uh, we have not, of course, uh, probably done uh, a comparison also what were the achievements of other civilizations and how we compare to them. So uh, I think we should be looking at it. Now the new education policy has some uh, focus on Vedic mathematics, but uh, Neeraji was just telling me, but they still don't allow PhD yeah. in mathematics. That is absurd. I mean, if you're studying something, whatever you study, please allow a PhD. The interest should be kept alive. And, you know, one thing which is very important uh, is that uh, we, of course, have a huge uh, heritage of uh, in science, astronomy, mathematics, etc. But we have to keep on adding to that. Otherwise, you will remain fossilized. You know, we, we can't afford to become just museum pieces. We have to go a little further, and new education policy, etc., should look at uh, that also. This is Jyotish Kyo for Ekwari. Baat hui thi. Until until G K time me. Until G K time. Then he introduced kiya gaya Jyotish uh, in astronomy and all that. But I do not know what is the state of uh, teaching yeah. in India today. Whether uh, people are doing so, we have to add to that knowledge, and of course, you have to modernize it, and you have to look at what is happening in the modern world uh, with the uh, uh, you know emergence of this artificial intelligence and uh, uh, now this chat GPT. I think somebody was just telling me chat GPT mein Abhisha kya rahe the. Uh, you are doing mathematics and chat GPT kuch aap karne wale hai, basic mathematics. So, kehne ka arthi hai ki jo modern uh, humari advances hai, ye unko iske saath bhi jodna bahut hai hai. So, I think today's uh, uh, today's uh, round table, we will discuss uh, some of these issues. And we have a, a very eminent panel. Neeraji, of course, uh, herself is well known in uh, uh, the Indian uh, culture circles. Bharati Sabbatha ke shetra mein inka bahut bada kaam hai. Maa Bharat ke upar bahut bada kaam hai. Ke kitabhi inho ne likhi hai. You know that. And she is the founder chairperson of the Draupadi Dream Trust, which is doing a great job. And her books are absolutely fantastic and uh, eye-opening. Uh, others I'm meeting for the first time. Uh, Anuradhaji is an associate professor at Delhi I'm College professor. of Professor. Professor. We have an associate. Or uh, uh, you are a mathematician and uh, you have uh, also presented uh, paper, papers, you have written papers on Vedic mathematics. And Professor C.K. Raju is with us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, and aapke cv mein maine dekha ki aapne c dac mein kaam kiya hai aur super computer param jo develop hua india mein 80s mein shayad usme aapka role hai in fact yesterday only we were talking about super computing and param ka bhi naam aaya tha usme and that was in the context of quantum technologies and how now quantum computers will even overtake the supercomputers. But then we have a base here. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, in, uh, you have, of course, uh, also written uh, several books. And some of these are like cultural foundations of mathematics. In fact, I just came across a book, which uh, I've not yet read it, but I read a few pages here and there. Very nice book. Uh, published somewhere in the US, it is about the history of mathematics. Very nice, history of mathematics. And it is a kind of a graduate course for uh, the students who said, Lekin usme India ka naam kehi tha. Not one word, not one word, but otherwise a brilliant book. So there is obviously, but they are not going to come and say ki aap 
ये तो हमारा काम है ना वी हैव टू पॉपुलराइज आर सेल्स एंड मेक श्योर दैट दे टू टेक नोट ऑफ अस सो आपने किताब लिखी है कल्चरल फाउंडेशन ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स इज साइंस वेस्टर्न इन ओरिजिन समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग यूक्लिड एंड जीसस दैट वुड बी इंटरेस्टिंग टू नो सो यू हैव बीन टीचिंग इन वेरियस यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड सो ऑन सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस and then we have punit gupta ji who is a vedic maths trainer so he'll give you the a demonstration on what vedic mathematics is all about so that it kindles interest and i can see two very young uh, boys here i'm glad that uh, they are also here and listening so with those words uh, a very warm welcome to all of you and i now uh, what is the method now you you will take off okay please thank you Thank you, sir. Uh, Namaskar. I am Pratibha Joshi from Faculty of Physics, and we are thrilled to have you in the first program in the series of Vedic Gyan Vidya. Now, I would like to request Chairperson of the Faculty of Physics to kindly facilitate Dr. Arvind Gupta. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, I would like to request the chairperson to kindly facilitate the speakers from Sir Anurag Gupta. Dr. C. P. Rashi. Just to share in the best to share, but just to share in the best to share. 
Namaskar, it's a great honor to be associated with the uh, Vivekanand International Foundation, and especially Dr. Arvind Gupta Ji, a highly learned personality. His thirst for knowledge actually amazes me. I thought I was crazy in learning, but he goes a step forward. Thank you so much. Uh, I was wondering, you must be wondering, why I'm playing the Indraprasth theme here? Well, we have titled, uh, as Shashwat Bharat celebrates its G20 presidency, uh, we at Draupadi Trust are celebrating our 20th year, and we have conceptualized the Draupadi Mahotsav. As a part of Draupadi Mahotsav, we have five categories of programs, and Indra Press Talks is an integral part and we merge Indra Press Talks in association. We bring different topics for deliberation and making and strengthening the roots of our civilization. Uh, I'm so happy that uh, Dr. Dilot uh, Goswami Ji, uh, Director General of the CAG, and uh, our trustee, however, <laughs> should. Air Vice Marshal Rajesh Lalji and so many uh, you know, important uh, students who have come here to understand this subject. The Vimarsh Indrapras topic is basically Vedic Gyan or Vigyan. Bharat ki rehne wali hu, Bharat ki baat patati hu, hai preet jaha ki reet sada mein geet vaha ke gati hu. Bharat ki rehne wali hu, Bharat ki baat patati hu. भारत की बात वहां शुरू होती है जहां भारत विश्व गुरु बना था 
एंड विश्व गुरु क्यों बना था बिकॉज हमारा वैदिक ज्ञान इतना महत्वपूर्ण विज्ञान था जिसकी वजह से हम पूरे विश्व में छा गए थे पूरे विश्व को हमने ज्ञान दिया था एंड इट इज टाइम नाउ फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड द विज्ञान इन द वैदिक ज्ञान एंड दैट इज वाई वी थॉट दैट इट वुड बी अप्रोप्रिएट Yes, we are doing Adi Parv, where we are highlighting our kala, sanskriti that has gone on for uh, centuries. We are doing Hamare Granth, Hamara Itihas. That's a three-day conference. We are doing our Draupadi Antar Katha, the dance drama. But this is a very important subject, the the Vedic Gyan Vigyan, because that is the root of our civilizational development. It is one of the core subjects. that actually took us to the world level now from the day a child is conceived do you know in indian uh, tradition calculation shuru ho jati hai kis now the science is also telling us kis mahine mein uska goat bharai ka program hoga kis mahine mein you know expected hai and the, when the child is in the eighth month break the woman is eight month there is a special ceremony and then the the way when the way she, when child is born to uska ek gotr ke hisab se uska ek you know rashi ka naam diya jata hai and their numerology plays a very important role so in every life in in every aspect of our life in, i mean our calendars developed our nakshatras the study of nakshatras we could calculate can you imagine how we could calculate the distance from here to the sun which is given in the hanuman uh, you know that chalisa so we realize something that we have been working for 20 years on highlighting the itihas the civilization the sanskriti of bharat but now that we have managed to quite an extent to establish that our grants are our itihas and we need to understand that that 4000 years of history can no more be limited to four pages we need to get down to knowing details of our 4000 years of history now as a part of that itihas our vedic gyan is important and mathematics is very important just to share on a lighter note uh, i took science in school I, in my till my o levels i had science and uh, i had biology and and then my my nan you know we had these irish nan she told me she called my father and said no no please tell her to leave biology she should do maths because i used to always get 99.5 in maths and why the five was cut <laughs> because i would always somehow make a mistake of writing the answer wrong or doing some cut somewhere so maths actually interested me very much and that's why astrology also interested me and as uh, dr gupta mentioned that we have been witness to seeing the, the miracles that somehow people thought were miracles of uh, shakuntala devi ji it was amazing to see her calculations but did we know how well was she was in mathematics we didn't know because we have not been exposed to our own knowledge systems and it is time that not only understanding that our granth is itihas we should also understand that our ancient knowledge systems need to be revived in core curricula so that we get to know the science the west is using that science computing uh, dr C, uh, uh, raju ji will tell us in every aspect why not we so uh, we conceptualize this i will not go into details of introducing our speakers because dr gupta I, it is his privilege and i'm so happy that he's taken that responsibility from uh, doing this wonderful uh, you know this uh, important work and uh, we are just once again i want to thank you all all and uh, that is why we played the indraprast why because i don't know in terms of history how much you all know that india's this capital indraprast was the capital of southeast asia for many centuries this is also documented by not our historians but even british historians and uh, that is why we feel that if india was known as a wish guru indraprast was definitely one of the important points and cradles of that uh, era so 
now that we are back again to understanding gradually our past, let us understand respect and make it integral to know this knowledge and take it forward. At least if it's not this generation, the younger children sitting here, and by that time, there will be integral uh, studies, it will be an integral part of the curriculum. So with this idea that we should bring in the policies, we should interact to bring in, find the, you know, sort of understand the issues and understand how to face these challenges. And Dr. Gupta is an expert on getting this whole, you know, uh, strategies created. So we thought that it would be just wonderful. The next thing that we plan is astrology. Today, unfortunately, the astrologers haven't come, but they said they had registered. Astrology is being used in West in a very many ways. And astrology is dependent on mathematics. Astronomical dating we did of the war, that's dependent on mathematics. So without taking too much time, I think it's very all eager to know what the experts tell us. Thank you so much once again, uh, Dr. Gupta and all of you for being here. Thank you. I request Dr. Arun Gupta to kindly take charge of the session. So thank you very much for that uh, introduction to uh, the Indraprastha series of events that you are holding. But let me also tell you, we also have an Indraprastha series here in VIF. Thank you. But uh, we have uh, been doing it, uh, what we call the Indraprastha uh, strategic game. Okay. And uh, that's about uh, you know the military and uh, foreign policy and diplomacy, uh, those situations and uh, how so it's a basically a scenario building uh, exercise and we finished one just uh, about a month ago. <laughs> we call it Indrapras Talks. Yeah, we call it Indrapras Series. Series. We have done, this is a four. We did the strategic gaming exercise in the press of four. Oh, yeah. Very good. So I'm so happy we have taken up the name of Indrapras yeah. now. Okay, so uh, let's begin our uh, uh, panel and uh, So uh, I think the program theme, et cetera, has been introduced now. Now, may I request first uh, Professor Anuradha Gupta, uh, who is the from Delhi University Head of Department of Mathematics at DCAC. Yes. It'll take about 15 minutes. I have prepared the presentation. Right. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. One five. Next, this one. So, good afternoon, all of you. Um, Dr. Arvind Gupta, Professor Neera Mishra, Professor C.K. Raju, Professor Puneet Gupta, and Mr. Puneet Gupta, and all present here. I'm going to speak on the applications of Vedic mathematics in higher education. Because all of you are familiar about multiplication, division, Square, square root, cube, cube root. Then I thought that uh, let me take something which is different, which you have not heard about it. That I'm going uh, the applications in calculus. Now in 11th and 12th, when a student goes and takes mathematics, then obviously the concept of limits, then continuity, differentiability, and integrability is and are introduced to them. So. In Vedic mathematics, we have a single sutra, Urtva Tregubhyam, which is vertically and crosswise. We are going to make use of this in calculating fifth derivative without calculating first, second, third, fourth derivative. And in single line, you can find out integration by parts, which is always a headache for the students, those who are studying in 11th and 12th. So I hope you will enjoy this session. But I begin with the significance of Vedic mathematics in present era and brief about the history of Vedic mathematics. Now, normally we say that Vedic mathematics is just because that it has come from Vedas. Yes, of course, a part is from Vedas, Atharved, basically. But later on, several mathematicians, Indian mathematicians, Bhaskaracharya, Brahmagupta, Somaya, Somayaji, they have written so many books and the geometry part, trigonometry part, it is not written in Vedas. 
later on they developed, they did research, and that is why we call this Vedic mathematics because it belongs to Vedic era. So let me start. You know there are four Vedas, Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda, and Atar Veda. As I said, that we have extracted few these sutras, 16 sutras from Atar Veda. And these are source of knowledge, wisdom, and have many subjects hidden in them. The ancient spheres saw mathematics in nature and expressed profound mathematical concepts in the form of hymns and verses, starting from the fundamental place values to advanced astronomical concepts. Vedic mathematics, an ancient form of mathematics, was not just related to one specific historical time or area, but it's found in all schools of thoughts and faiths. This ancient form of mathematics was born in the Vedic age, but the system as well as the significance of this form was buried under for centuries, but later on, Sri Bharti Krishna Tirajji. He developed all these sutras taken from the Atharveda between 1911 to 1918. Basically, he correlated the modern mathematics with the Vedic mathematics. For example, if you know that A plus B whole square, this is A square plus 2AB plus B square. So he related this formula of modern mathematics of A plus B square with a sutra, which I think Mr. Puneet is going to explain. Sutras, it means a uh, thread of knowledge. These sutras are well described as word formulae or one line formulae that ease mathematical calculations. These formulae naturally make the mind work in direction to the appropriate method of solution. It covers various aspects of mathematics such as arithmetic, algebra, geometry, calculus, and trigonometry. In recent years, it has been found that students lack interest in mathematics. It does not help the student to cultivate and enhance their inherent ability to think in original way. The kind of thinking is essential to do well in mathematics, especially when they get problems to be solved with a sense of practical life applications and not just to repeat what they have learned in the classroom. But Vedic mathematics, it removes the fear and monotony of the Western methods of mathematics that banishes the interest from the mind almost forever. Today, mathematics is needed in all fields of existence. Without interest in mathematics, the entire education remains insufficient. The best possible way for interest to grow is to make a simple and creative approach that can rekindle the power of brain. Vedic mathematics, it is based on 16 sutras and 13 sub-sutras that are easily memorized, easily understandable, enabling to solve long and tough mathematical calculations quickly and effectively. Sometimes calculations can be carried out mentally without even using paper and pen. This can bring the student's attention to the great need of getting high proficiency in mathematics both in scoring well in their exams, as well as to meet the challenges in future and daily life. This will bring the young brains to be highly interested in mathematics. The most astonishing feature of Vedic mathematics is its coherence. Instead of mixture of unrelated techniques, the whole system is unified and interrelated. These techniques are simple, easy, and systematic. The simplicity of Vedic mathematics means that calculations can be carried out mentally. There are many advantages in using a flexible mental system of calculations because it leads to more creative, interesting, and interactive techniques. Why do we need Vedic mathematics in present era? To attain success in competitive exams, one has to excel in calculations. Calculations need some guidelines, expertise, and tips through which one could solve the mathematics-related questions easily and quickly. 
Vedic mathematics can play a very important role in solving questions faster than traditional method of solving calculations. In competitive exams, students have to solve the mathematical problems very fast with accuracy and with the help of shortcut methods of Vedic mathematics, they can easily and quickly solve the complex addition, multiplication, division based questions even more. These are the basic 16 sutras. And if you are an expert, you are able to understand the meaning of all these 16 sutras and how to apply. Then you can, I think, solve all the problems of in mathematics, even a higher level mathematics, even graduate level mathematics also. Not totally, but partially. So these are 16 sutras. First is Nikhilam, Dardasha, Charma, Dastaha. It means all from nine, last from ten. Second is Ekadikin Purvain. This means by one more than the previous one. So uh, we will explain one by one. Otherwise, it will take more time if I explain each and everything. So I'm just showing you all the 16 sutras. English meaning is also written. I want to explain you a simple thing. If we say Ekadikin Purvain, means one more than the previous one. We can use this in our life also. Suppose you are climbing the stairs. So we are climbing the stair one after the other. So it means this is Ekadikin Purvain. Similarly, when you are climbing down the stairs, it is Ekadikin Purvain. One uh, less than the previous one. So if you try to just uh, relate all these sutras with your day-to-day -day life, then it is easier to understand and how do we apply these. So lots of research is going on in uh, on these sutras. And we are, even I have written research papers in Vedic mathematics. See, in 12th standard, when we multiply two matrices, so sometimes students make mistakes. But I have developed a shortcut method. In one line, you will find the matrix multiplication. Even the determinant you can find in one, one line. Within a second, you will find the value of the determinant. By using the sutras. Sutras. Or new sutra you have. No, no, no. sutras only. So next says applications in calculus. So uh, this is differentiation. If you have a function y is equal to fx, x is independent variable and y is dependent variable. Means by substituting different values of x, you can find the values of y. When you differentiate a function y is equal to fx with respect to x, it means that we are studying the rate of change in the dependent variable with respect to independent variable. So if you just see the normal definition of uh, def uh, differentiation is that we find out the limit delta x tending to 0 of x plus delta x minus fx. This is the change in the value of phi, the dependent variable, divided by the change in the independent variable, which is delta x, means is it x plus delta x minus x, so it becomes delta x. So this is the derivative of y with respect to x. We have some important formulae, those who are in 12, or those who are science students, they can easily see these formulae. These are the basic formulae which we need in Vedic mathematics also. See, next is, if we have a function x cubed sine x, this is the product of two functions, okay? So, what we write, we write first functions, this is x cube and sine x, and then we write the derivatives. This is 3x square cos x. Then we use uh, the Orthava Trigabhyam, this third sutra, it means that we just cross multiply it. So when you cross multiply, you are getting x cubed cos x and 3x square sin x. So it is simpler. See, when we check copies or answer scripts of students, sometimes they miss one term. But when they apply this, they won't miss any term. They will write all the terms, just cross multiply it. Now, this is the simple one. If we go for higher order derivatives, for higher order derivatives, we need this table. And this table is nothing but the powers of 11. When you have first derivative, the coefficient is 1 because 11 raised to the power 0 is 1. When you find first order derivative, its coefficients are 1, 1 because 11 raised to the power 1 is 11. So we have 11. 
Second derivative, the coefficients are 1, 2, 1, because 11 square is 121, and so on. Third derivative, fourth derivative, fifth derivative. But how do we use this? If suppose I say find the fifth derivative directly without calculating first and second derivative. See, it is very simple. In the first line, you write x5, x raised to the power 5, and write all the five derivatives of x raised to the power 5. So first is 5x raised to the power 4, then 20x cubed, 60x squared. And similarly, e raised to the power 2x, you find out this. And since I want to find out third derivative, and what were the coefficients for the third derivative? These were 1, 3, 3, 1. So you write down 1, 3, 3, 1. And then you multiply uh, with the cross. I have written the first, first with the first, first with the last, second with the second last, and so on. And then multiply with the coefficients also. So in one time, you can easily find the answer. Without calculating first and second derivative, directly you can find out the third derivative. Now use blackboard just to explain something. Where's the third derivative? Okay. Is it visible? No. Yeah. Can you want to find out the derivative of composition for this competition that we have two functions f1 turn the mind this way uh we have two functions f1 and f2 and we composite these two functions so it is going to be f1 f2x if suppose I want to find out the derivative of this function, so what is the derivative? It is chain rule. We first differentiate this function. So we have this is f2x, and then we differentiate this second function. This is f2 dash. Sometimes students miss this part, f2 dash. But in Vedic mathematics, there is no chance of missing this part out. If suppose I take a function cos 4x plus 5 or any other function, whole square. This is computation of three functions. One is square, another is cos, and the third one is 4x plus 5. So what we do is we write all these three parts separately. Means first is whole square. Means we differentiate only whole square. Means x square. What is the derivative? 2x. Means you bring out this 2 here. So obviously its derivative is going to be 2 times cos 4x plus 5. Then we have another function, second function, 4x plus 5. So what is the derivative of cos? It is minus sine 4x plus 5. What is the third function? It is 4x plus 5. And its derivative is 4 only because it is a constant derivative of constant is 0. So what is the answer? We just multiply the chain. So there is no chance of missing any term when you have this. So we are again using this or the work. Vertically and crosswise. So, what is the answer to this? If you want to find out the derivative of this function, this is 4 to the h, 8 cos 4x plus 5 into sine 4x plus 5. This is the answer. Just multiply the quantity. So, I have found fifth derivative without calculating first, second, third, and fourth derivative. So, this is fifth derivative means we have function e raised to the power 2x log x. Take first function e raised to the power 2x, take its fifth derivative, log x, its fifth derivative also. And I told you it is 11 raised to the power 5. The coefficients are 11 raised to the power 5. And it is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And just multiply, you will get the answer. Next is integration. These are basic formulae for integration. You know, in the 
uh, when you find the integration of the product of two functions, then we, this is known as integration by parts. First function, integral of second, then minus times, uh, uh, integral, derivative of first, and integration of second, and then you again integrate it. But in Vedic mathematics, see, it is very simple. We have this function x cube log x. In the first, uh, you take the function and then derivative. So first function is log x. And obviously, we here you are going to use ilh, integer logarithmic algebraic trigonometric exponential. The same thing, just to choose the first function. So then we take the integration and we have x cube x4 by 4. First function derivative, derivative of log x is 1 by x. And integration of x cube is x4 by 4. And we put this plus minus sign alternatively, plus sign minus sign plus sign minus sign, and just yeah. multiply the cross multiply. Four. It is also vertically and crosswise. Crosswise means you multiply log x and x4 by 4, and vertically 1 by x and x4 by 4. And you can see in one line you are getting this answer for this integration by parts. Similarly, if we have this x square sine 3x. Maybe you'll have to speed up a little bit otherwise. Two more slides are yeah. These are the main issues which we are facing in the teaching and learning of Vedic mathematics. See, till date, we are able to introduce only certificate, diploma, value-added courses in Vedic mathematics only in various higher education institutes. There is no degree course in any of the university in India in Vedic mathematics. Second main aspect is no job avenues for the PhD scholars in India. I came to know one girl, she is doing PhD and in PhD in India, we have two parts. One is the coursework and another is the thesis writing. I mean, we write research papers. She was facing so many problems in getting the coursework, the admission in coursework because there is no syllabi for the coursework of PhD in Vedic mathematics. Next is PhD can't be awarded in Vedic mathematics. Means when this degree is awarded, it is written multi in multidisciplinary subject. They cannot write Vedic mathematics even after completing PhD in Vedic mathematics. Next is no formal training is given to school or university teachers so that they can learn various aspects of Vedic mathematics. Lack of good literature for higher mathematics and Vedic mathematics. The Book by Bharti Krishna Tiradri, it is known as the Bible of Vedic Mathematics, but it was written in 60s, 1960. So after that, lots of research is going on, but nobody has compiled any book which can be used in higher, math um, higher education in Vedic Mathematics. Proper recognition is not given to the people working in the field of Vedic Mathematics. And the last is lack of syllabi at various levels of education in Vedic mathematics, starting from school education to college. So these are the issues which we are facing because I am associated with this. I have uh, given lectures in so many workshops on Vedic mathematics, but everywhere we face students used to ask, can we do PhD? Even in Delhi University, we are not able to introduce Vedic mathematics at PhD level. We just introduce a value added course in Vedic mathematics. These are uh, evaluated course, but only two lectures are given to us to teach Vedic mathematics in a week. So these are the basic hurdles which we are facing as a teacher in the university or in at school level. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Anuradhaji. I think uh, those uh, demonstrations were really fantastic, and. Uh, uh, and uh, the challenges that you mentioned, we'll come to that a uh, little bit later and uh, take this uh, forward. So now I request uh, Professor Raju. Maybe he should talk. Okay. 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 Please, please. I think I'll go there and maybe. Yeah, 
सभी को नमस्कार अनुराधा जी ने बहुत कुछ बता दिया आपको वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स के बारे में मैं कुछ स्कूल लेवल के ऊपर आपको वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स के बारे में मल्टीप्लीकेशन एडिशन सब्सट्रैक्शन और इस तरह से कुछ टेबल्स Like मल्टीप्लीकेशन नियर बेस बेस मीन टेन हंड्रेड थाउजेंड टेन थाउजेंड मतलब वन और नंबर ऑफ जीरो उसका मैं मल्टीप्लीकेशन पर डिस्कस कर रहा हूं आपको बेस टेन सपोज बेस हंड्रेड और बेस थाउजेंड सपोज ट्वेल्व इंटू थर्टी नॉर्मली आंसर में हम लोग एक स्लैश यूज कर रहे हैं उसके दो साइड हैं राइट साइड एंड लेफ्ट साइड तो सिर्फ ये बताना है ट्वेल्व टेन से मोर है दैट इज टू और थ्री ट्वेल्व इज टू मोर देन टेन एंड थर्टीन इज थ्री मोर देन टेन तो राइट साइड में आपने क्या करना है दोनों को मल्टीप्लीकेशन करना है टू इंटू थ्री सिक्स और लेफ्ट साइड में डायगनली नंबर्स को आप प्लस करेंगे थर्टीन प्लस टू या तो इन दोनों को प्लस कर दीजिए और इन दोनों को प्लस कर दीजिए आंसर सेम आए थर्टीन प्लस टू फिफ्टीन ट्वेल्व प्लस थ्री फिफ्टीन वन फिफ्टी सिक्स इज द आंसर एक और एग्जांपल ले लेता हूं ये बेस हंड्रेड हो जाएगा हंड्रेड एंड थ्री हंड्रेड से थ्री मोर है हंड्रेड एंड सेवन हंड्रेड से सेवन मोर तो राइट right साइड में सेम मल्टीप्लाई कर देंगे सेवन थ्री सा ट्वेंटी वन और लेफ्ट साइड में या तो आप इनको प्लस कर दीजिए और इसको आंसर सेम आए हंड्रेड एंड सेवन प्लस थ्री वन वन जीरो टू वन इज द आंसर एक और एग्जांपल ले लेते हैं बेस थाउजेंड वन थाउजेंड फोर वन थाउजेंड से फोर मोर है और वन थाउजेंड एट एट मोर है तो राइट साइड में तो मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे फोर एट जा थर्टी टू और वन थाउजेंड एट प्लस फोर वन थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व अब यहां पे एक छोटा सा रूल आ जाएगा बेस में जितनी जीरो है यहां पे वन जीरो थी तो स्लैश के राइट साइड में वन डिजिट या टू जीरो है स्लैश के राइट साइड में टू डिजिट या थ्री जीरो है तो स्लैश के राइट साइड में थ्री डिजिट यहां पे टू डिजिट है तो एक जीरो लगा देंगे ये सारे नंबर बेस से अब लिए मैंने अब मैं बेस से बिलो ले लेता हूं सपोज नाइन और सेवन तो नाइन वन लेस है हम लोग माइनस का जो साइन है ऊपर यूज करते हैं एज ए बार नेगेटिव वन सेवन जो है वो थ्री लेस है तो माइनस थ्री और माइनस वन को मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे थ्री आंसर आ जाएगा सेवन माइनस थ्री वन सिक्स हो जाएगा नाइन माइनस थ्री सिक्सटी थ्री इज द आंसर एक और एग्जांपल ले लेता हूं नाइनटी सिक्स फोर लेस है हंड्रेड से नाइनटी टू एट लेस है एट फोर सा थर्टी टू नाइनटी टू माइनस फोर करेंगे एट्टी एट और नाइनटी सिक्स माइनस एट करेंगे तब भी आंसर एट्टी एट आएगा सिमिलरली इन केस ऑफ थाउजेंड दिस इज फाइव लेस दिस इज टेन लेस राइट साइड में फिफ्टी हो जाएगा 990 माइनस फाइव नाइन एटी फाइव थ्री डिजिट मेंटेन करने एक जीरो लगा दे बेस मल्टीप्लीकेशन है 
मैं अभी आ रहा हूँ एक्चुअल जब एक हाँ बिल्कुल बिल्कुल वो अभी बात हाँ ये मैंने अभी बेस लिया है मैं सिर्फ एक इंट्रोडक्शन दे रहा हूँ बट वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स को बिकॉज यहाँ पे बहुत सारे ऑडियंस कई वैरायटी है कोई आर्ट साइड्स हैं कोई साइंस साइड्स हैं कोई मैथमेटिक्स साइड्स है तो मैं सबके पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से लेके चल रहा हूँ एक ऐसा टॉपिक जो थोड़ा सा क्लियर हो जाए वैदिक uh, मैथमेटिक्स के अंदर कई बार ऐसे ऐसे स्टेप्स होते हैं जो काफी लेंथी होते हैं और कॉम्प्लिकेटेड होते हैं तो वो भी बहुत सिंपल तरीके से हो जाते हैं जैसे मैं सिंपल क्वेश्चन ले रहा हूँ एडिशन और सब्टशन का मान लीजिए क्वेश्चन है तो इस क्वेश्चन को नॉर्मली हम तीन स्टेप में करेंगे पहले प्लस वाले नंबर को प्लस करेंगे देन माइनस नंबर वाले को प्लस करेंगे देन दोनों का डिफरेंस हम कैलकुलेट करेंगे बट वैदिक मैथ्स के अंदर एक लाइन में एक स्टेप में आंसर निकाल सकते हैं नॉर्मली हम लोग जो कैलकुलेशन करते हैं वो राइट right साइड से करते हैं बट इन वैदिक मैथ्स हम लेफ्ट साइड से भी कर सकते हैं और मैं इसको लेफ्ट साइड से ही कर रहा हूँ ये टेंस प्लेस का डिजिट है सेवन सेवन माइनस थ्री फोर फोर प्लस फोर एट एट माइनस टू सिक्स सिक्स प्लस वन सेवन सेवन माइनस वन सिक्स अब बिकॉज ये टेंस प्लेस के डिजिट थे तो एक जीरो लगा दीजिए सिक्सटी हो गया प्लस फाइव सिक्सटी फाइव माइनस टू सिक्सटी थ्री प्लस फोर सिक्सटी सेवन माइनस थ्री सिक्सटी सिक्सटी फोर प्लस टू सिक्सटी सिक्स माइनस फोर सिक्सटी टू इज द आंसर इस तरह से आप कर सकते तो विदाउट सिंगल स्टेप में और एक ही लाइन में आपका आंसर आ जाए इवन सब्रैक्शन भी हम थ्रू एडिशन करते हैं विदाउट बोरोइंग करते हैं अदरवाइज बोरिंग करने के अंदर बच्चे नॉर्मली उसको कट करके ऊपर लिखते हैं और इस तरह से करते हैं तो वो कंसेप्ट इन यूज करते हैं जैसे हम राधे जी ने बताया उधर तेरे एक भ्याम एक फॉर्मूला है क्रॉस मल्टीप्लीकेशन एक मल्टीप्लीकेशन के कई मेथड्स हैं और बहुत सारे मेथड्स हैं इसीलिए वो शॉर्टकट्स हो जाते हैं एक जर्नल मेथड में आपको बता देता हूं नॉर्मली ये थ्री फोर स्टेप्स में होगा पहले आप थ्री को मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे देन टू को मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे देन उसको प्लस करेंगे अगर ये थ्री एरो हम ध्यान रख लें इसको तो एक ही लाइन में आंसर आ जाएगा This is our first step. Four threes are twelve. Two, one carry over. Then ये वाला step आएगा cross multiply. Four को two से multiply करेंगे that is eight. और three को three से eight और nine seventeen और one eighteen eight one carry over हो जाएगा. Last step ये आ जाएगा आपका. थ्री टू जो सिक्स और वन सेवन क्रॉस मल्टीप्लीकेशन अच्छा है सिंपल कंसेप्ट है लेकिन इसी का कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मेथड्स कॉम्प्लिकेटेड क्वेश्चन आ जाए जब हम क्या करेंगे फॉर एग्जांपल फिफ्टीन इंटू ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी थ्री इंटू इलेवन फिफ्टीन इंटू ट्वेंटी वन मतलब ये मल्टीप्लाई है और देन प्लस भी है अब नॉर्मली पहले इसको मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे इसको मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे इसको मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे देन उसको प्लस करेंगे तो आप इस मेथड को यूज करके एक साथ आंसर निकाल सकते हैं अच्छा 
इस मेथड में मैंने राइट right साइड से यूज किया था यहाँ पे हम लेफ्ट साइड से भी यूज कर सकते हैं आंसर सेम आए फर्स्ट ये वाला स्टेप टू वन जै टू थ्री वन जै थ्री टू प्लस थ्री फाइव और टू वन जै टू फाइव प्लस टू सेवन टू थ्री सेकेंड स्टेप क्रॉस मल्टीप्लीकेशन टू और टेन ट्वेल्व थ्री और थ्री सिक्स ट्वेल्व और सिक्स एटीन नाइनटीन नाइनटीन और टेन ट्वेंटी नाइन लास्ट स्टेप फाइव टू जै टेन थ्री वन जै थ्री थर्टीन और फाइव एटीन फाइनल आंसर जो होगा एट वन इधर कैरी ओवर हो जाएगा ट्वेंटी नाइन प्लस वन थर्टी जीरो तो थ्री यहां चला जाएगा टेन वन थाउजेंड एट इज द आंसर इसी टाइप से इसमें बहुत सारे कंसेप्ट होते हैं स्क्वेयर्स हैं क्यूब्स हैं स्क्वेयर रूट क्यूब रूट टाइम की थोड़ी लिमिटेशन हैं, लेकिन मैं एक स्क्वेयर्स का आपको एग्जांपल और दे देता हूँ क्यूब रूट उसके लिए सर थोड़ा सा कंसेप्ट चाहिए होता है थोड़ा सा टाइम लगेगा उसमें मुझे पूरा एक्सप्लेन करना पड़ेगा मैं एक स्क्वेयर्स का एग्जाम्पल देता हूँ आपको वन टू वन बहुत सारे मेथड्स हैं सबसे पहले नॉर्मली हमारा तो एक ही मेथड होता है नंबर को आप उसी से मल्टीप्लाई कर देते बट आई थिंक स्क्वायर्स के 20 मेथड्स हैं वन टू वन ट्वेंटी फाइव वन टू ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव टू सेवेंटी फाइव देन सेवेंटी फाइव टू वन ट्वेंटी फाइव मैं सिर्फ ये वाला कंसेप्ट आपको एक्सप्लेन कर देता हूं सपोज 106 एंड सिक्स स्क्वेयर आप फाइंड आउट करते हैं नॉर्मली आप ऐसे करते हैं 106 एंड सिक्स इंटू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स में 106 एंड सिक्स हंड्रेड से सिक्स मोर है तो 106 एंड सिक्स में सिक्स एड कर दीजिए आप ये स्लैश है आपका जो डिजिट आपने एड किया है सिक्स उसका स्क्वायर तो 106 प्लस सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व हो जाएगा और 6 का स्क्वायर 36 हो जाएगा तो ये आंसर है आपका एक और एग्जांपल ले लेते हैं 107 सेवन सेवन मोर है हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टीन सेवन का स्क्वायर 49 आप कैलकुलेट करना चाहे आप कैलकुलेट कर लीजिए 109 का 109 नाइन मोर हंड्रेड एंड नाइन प्लस नाइन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन हो जाएगा और नाइन का स्क्वायर एटी वन इसी को मैं कंप्लीट कर देता हूं हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड से ट्वेल्व मोर है हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व प्लस ट्वेल्व वन ट्वेंटी फोर और ट्वेल्व का स्क्वायर वन फोर्टी फोर अब यहां पे एक छोटा सा रूल ये सारे नंबर आपने कंपेयर किए हंड्रेड से 100 में नंबर ऑफ जीरो टू है तो राइट साइड ऑफ द स्लैश यू हैव टू मेंटेन ओनली टू डिजिट या थ्री डिजिट है लास्ट के टू डिजिट एज इट इज रहेंगे 44, वन इधर ऐड हो जाएगा वन टू फाइव फोर फोर ध्यान से एक नंबर आप कैलकुलेट कर लीजिए माइंड में अगर कैलकुलेट कर सकते हैं तो दट इज हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन 115, 15 मोर है 115 प्लस 15, 130 हो जाएगा और 15 का स्क्वायर 225, ट्वेंटी फाइव टू इधर आप एड कर देंगे वन थ्री टू टू फाइव इज 
और इसमें जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट है वो है कंसेंट्रेशन अगर आपने ध्यान दिया हो 115 को पहले आपने 100 से कंपेयर किया फर्स्ट स्टेप 115 में 15 ऐड किया सेकंड स्टेप 15 का स्क्वायर के 225 थर्ड स्टेप देन 2 ऐड किया फोर्थ स्टेप तो जब आप फोर स्टेप कोई चीज मेंटली करेंगे यू नीड अ कंसंट्रेशन कन्वेंशनल जो मेथड होता था उसमें आप नंबर को ऊपर नीचे लिख के मल्टीप्लाई कर रहे करते करते आप कहीं और भी चले गए कंसंट्रेशन लूज हो गया आपको नहीं पता लेकिन इस मेथड से सिर्फ आप कंसंट्रेट हैं तभी आप कर पाएंगे अदरवाइज नहीं कर पाएंगे एक और एग्जांपल ले लेता हूं 102 102 टू मोर टू स्क्वायर 102 प्लस टू हंड्रेड एंड फोर एंड टू स्क्वायर इज फोर रूल सेम है टू डिजिट मेंटेन करने वन डिजिट है तो जीरो लगा देंगे ये सारे नंबर अब अब हंड्रेड से अब आ जाइए बिलो हंड्रेड सारा रूल सेम रहेगा अब अब हंड्रेड में आपने प्लस किया है बिलो हंड्रेड में माइनस कर देंगे नाइनटी सिक्स नाइनटी सिक्स हंड्रेड से फोर लेस है फोर स्क्वायर नाइनटी सिक्स माइनस फोर नाइनटी टू फोर स्क्वायर सिक्सटी 95, 5 लेस है तो 95 फाइव माइनस फाइव नाइनटी हो जाएगा फाइव स्क्वायर ट्वेंटी फाइव एटी एच एटी एट इज ट्वेल्व लेस रूल सेम रहेगा राइट साइड में टू डिजिट मेंटेन करेंगे 44 फोर एज इट इज वन इधर एड हो जाएगा तो फाइनल आंसर 77, 44. एक और केस ले लेते हैं इसका 98, 98 टू लेस है टू स्क्वायर 96, सिक्स फोर टू डिजिट मेंटेन करने जीरो अच्छा सेम प्रोसेस आगे कंटिन्यू हो सकता है अब प्रॉब्लम क्या है कि सपोज 71 का स्क्वायर फाइंड आउट करना तो 71 वन इज ट्वेंटी नाइन लेस देन हंड्रेड तो सेवेंटी वन में से ट्वेंटी नाइन तो सब हो जाएगा बट ट्वेंटी नाइन का स्क्वायर नहीं पता इसलिए उसको वो सेकेंड ग्रुप में रखा हुआ तो अगर आपको ये अंडरस्टैंड हो गया अच्छे से तो मैं आगे बताऊं ट्वेंटी फाइव टू सेवेंटी फाइव इसका जो मिडिल नंबर है दैट इज 50 एंड स्क्वायर ऑफ 50 इज 2500 इस ग्रुप में जो आप स्क्वायर कैलकुलेट करेंगे इधर मोर देन 50 और लेस देन 50 से 51 59 और लेस देन 50 हो जाएगा 48 42 एट स्क्वायर्स आप फाइंड आउट कर रहे हैं 51 इज वन मोर देन 59 इज नाइन मोर 48 इज टू लेस 42 टू इज एट लेस जो भी आप एड और लेस करेंगे दैट इज इन ट्वेंटी फाइव फिफ्टी वन फिफ्टी वन तो ट्वेंटी फाइव आप लिखेंगे फिफ्टी वन इज वन मोर देन फिफ्टी तो ट्वेंटी फाइव मोर है तो प्लस कर देंगे आप देन वन स्क्वायर टू सिक्स रूल सेम टू डिजिट मेंटेन करने दैट इज जीरो वन 59, 9 मोर है 25 में ही करेंगे 25 प्लस 9, नाइन स्क्वायर थ्री फोर एट वन सिमिलरली जो नंबर लेस है उसे आप माइनस कर देंगे आप फोर्टी एट इज टू लेस ट्वेंटी फाइव माइनस टू टू स्क्वायर टू थ्री जीरो फोर फोर्टी टू इज एट लेस ट्वेंटी फाइव माइनस एट एट स्क्वायर वन सेवन ट्वेंटी फाइव टू वन ट्वेंटी फाइव आप स्क्वायर कैलकुलेट कर सकते हैं वन टू ट्वेंटी फाइव बिल्कुल सेम है इसकी तरह से यहां पे बेस हो जाएगा टेन सपोज ट्वेल्व का स्क्वायर आप फाइंड आउट करना है तो ट्वेल्व इज टू मोर देन टेन टू स्क्वायर 12 और 2, 14, 2 स्क्वायर 
अब रूल चेंज हो जाएगा यूनिट डिजिट बिकॉज आपने टेन से कंपेयर किया टेन में सिंगल जीरो है तो राइट right साइड में सिंगल डिजिट रहेगा एक और एग्जाम्पल ले लेता हूँ फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन इज फाइव मोर देन टेन सिंगल डिजिट मेंटेन करना है लास्ट डिजिट एज इट इज रहेगा ये टू यहां ऐड हो जाएगा ट्वेंटी टू फाइव राइट सर आई थिंक सर विशेष थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ so thank you uh, puri ji got a glimpse of what the cap capabilities of physics uh, mathematics are and this is just a very very small uh, glimpse of what we can really do but i hope it is it will generate uh, lot of interest and people could read more about uh, this i'm sure you are ke video wagera bhi honge aap pe abhi nahi hai okay so ab uh, i now request professor raju to kindly make his uh, remarks see if i can thank you very much thank you for inviting me and uh, it is a very nice thing that you are doing which is that organizing a discussion because this was the tradition in india to have shastra and fixing the important ah, this is size is very small i can't read it yeah it is supposed to be also then signal here yeah, uska you know the picture ah okay right okay i can also use my mouse so maybe i can click myself I'm not so sure. Okay, so I am taking a contrary position, and uh, I think that is very important that you are doing it here, which is an institute for strategic studies. People have not understood the strategic value of the control of knowledge, and that is essentially what has happened with mathematics. That the West controls it. and nobody understands that and therefore i would like to talk about just a little bit very quickly about vedic math versus authentic indian ganit all right so first point i would like to make is that we should not tell lies about the ved it hurts me very much there it is not found in the ved everybody agrees the book says so i have the book here says so on its first page Says so on page thirty-five. Please take a look. These formulae are not found in the present. He says present essential. Why is not found in the Atharva Ved? All right. Let's be very clear about it. Let's not lie about the Ved to promote something. That's not right. All right. So this is what the book also admits. Everybody admits that. I thought, but I was surprised to say that uh, this is found in the Ved. It is not found in the Ved. So I have written about this. Here is an article in the Hindu. This mouse doesn't uh, work so nicely here. Yeah, here is an article in the Hindu. Uh, can you enlarge it, please? Control plus. Control plus. Yeah. Enlarge it some more. Is it clear? Little more. Little more. So uh, this was an article in the Hindu. Yeah, I think is it visible now? So uh, uh, this, uh, all right. Can you close this? Uh, maybe I can close this tab that you have just opened. Uh, all right. This is the tab I want to close. All right. Doesn't work. Okay. So there's similar article in Jansatta in Hindi, and there are responses from Mr. Kothari, who works with Dinanath Batra, who is a co-convener of that. and that is there in this blog now i want the internet for ah, it is there so it is here which uh, looks at both of these looks at various objections that were raised and it looks at uh, there's a long blog so i want to go further into it i just want to say that it is there there's a long discussion that took place around 
with Mr. Atul Kothari, Dinanath Patra. I also talked with him at length at the Ujjain meeting. And uh, so uh, the point is that he admits, of course, he says, the Vedic math is not found in the way. Let's be very clear about it. We should not lie about it. It is totally contrary to Indian culture. All right. Okay. So let's go to the next point, which is the real math found in the way. And it is described in this book. If I can manage to use the mouse, I'm not sure I can use it. This is a book. This poor chap used to come to Pune University and he used to hang around and say, this is the uh, math as known to the Vedic Samhita. All right. It's out of print, but it's available. So, um, all right. And there is this book that I have got which talks about the real math in the way. The Yajur Vedas are 17.2. And that is extremely important because you find the word Parārdha there. And it looks also at the Lalit Vista Sutta, which is what you find in the Buddhist tradition. And uh, uh, can I take this? Sure, sure. So it's extremely important that we talk about it because such large numbers like Pralakshan, which is 10 to the power 53. They are not found in Greek tradition. So very important thing is that if there was, if there was some Aryans, if Greeks and Romans, you know, Greek and Latin and Sanskrit and Persian, they all come from one common source, why is the mathematics so different? It's a very critical issue. So they did not have the largest Roman number, the myriad. So they could not manage it, and the proof of that is their lousy calendar, which we use today. Can't do fractions; it uses leap years. Observe. So you don't get equinox on the same day, even after the Gregorian reform. I'm talking about after the Gregorian reform, 1582. Julian calendar is miserable, and we have such a sophisticated calendar. We have shared it. Our calendar reform committee. They had Meghna Sa, an honourable man, but unfortunately very colonised. And so he said that it must be the way the West does it. Caesars depend only on the tropical year. Completely wrong. Indian tra tradition uses the uh, Siberian year. Anyway, I won't go into that. I'm saying there are other things. Like, for example, there is the Aksha Sutta. So much say, Majab Tasya Maksho. So there's a uh, 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 hymn on dice. So this is the earliest thing. And probability theory begins from there. And probably here is very important for chat GPT. For doing that, you have to, I was going to give a talk to Google, Google Inc. Well, I gave them one talk, but I was to give them a second talk to explain that you must understand your statistics. Otherwise, everything will go bonkers. It all depends on statistics. Right now, if you do chat GPT, you give it a four digit number to multiply, it can't do it because it proceeds on guesswork. Of course, it will improve, but the point is that if you make a mistake in that statistics, then you are going to have a problem. So this theory of probability was developed in India. In India, I have a translation. I won't go into that. I have a long paper on this from the Sapia Encyclopedia of Philosophy of Science. It's called Probability in Ancient India. It is in the Mahabharata, in the Akshasukta, in the Red Veda, and so on. So this is genuine stuff which is there in the Indian tradition, in the uh, uh, in our text, and so on. And it is of value today. How I will have to explain that is a very long explanation. I'll come to that. All right. It's a value today because we need statistics. We need things like calculus and so on. I'm not able to manage the mouse at all. So maybe I can take a piece of paper. Prepared, have you? Maybe this will help. Yeah. Ah, chal raha hai. It is okay. I think oh my, I can't manage it. Uh, ye... Yeah, thank you. The pad ka problem nahi hai, ye control ka problem. Range ka. Ha? Range ka. control ka problem hai. Pad ka problem nahi hai. Iske rakhe hai. Ye aap uh, go back to the main presentation, which is on this tab. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay, so uh, you have this issue of statistics and so on, which is there, which is, it's the first thing that you find anywhere in the world. 
the game of dice, which is the uh, theory of probability is based on that. And then the uh, whole, I mean, after all, Yudhishthir uses uh, his kingdom based on a, a game of dice, Null and Damianti, the whole story is about the game of dice and so on. I won't go into that. Let me go ahead. So the point is all this real stuff, which is there, never mentioned in this book. He is doing some Western mathematics with some formulae, with some, uh, uh, actually, those formulae are good. I have no problem with that. You teach that mental mathematics, but don't call it Vedic. Why lie about it? Do mental mathematics. And now, the point is, it's not mathematics. What is done in India is Ganit. And there is a fundamental difference. Matter, there are no limits. It is total metaphysics, which is absent in Indian tradition because it begins from the empirical. Ganit accepts empirical proof. And formal mathematics does not limit our total metaphysics. I have brought them as when I used to teach real analysis, but they have nothing to do with any Ganit. All right, I teach calculus without limits. So this is the paper on Ganit Banam mathematics. So please read it. Basically, what we should be doing is to teach Ganit. That is part of our system and that is useful to us. And that is currently useful to us. All right, but we are not doing that. Instead, we are talking about something which is not true. And don't use the word way in the context of something false. It's very bad. All right. So it's being used to cheat people. It demeans to me. All right. It is a disservice to Hindus. And I feel hurt by it. I don't know why people go on and on with it. I feel hurt by it. All right. So there are apologies. Apologia, book might say, uh, Vedic in the sense that all knowledge is in the way. What do you mean all knowledge? Is my manual for car repair there? Obviously not. You know, I mean, you have to understand what is meant by all knowledge or all worthwhile knowledge or useful knowledge. It is not about all, all knowledge. Okay, so let's not say that. Now it says ancient hence Vedic. That is what Mr. Atul Kothari said. Ancient doesn't mean Vedic. We have so many traditions. We have Lokaya, we have Buddhists, we have Jains. They all reject the way they reject Shabda Praman. And uh, they say that moksha is laughable. That's what Lokaya says. So, are you going to call that Vedic knowledge just because it's ancient? It's anti-Vedic knowledge, very clearly anti-Vedic knowledge. Moksha is the central aspect of Hinduism. If you reject it, what else is left? You can't call it Vedic. All right, it is uh, this thing. And they say, what do they say? They say the authors of the Ved are Dhur. They are, uh, Ved is Anit. And it is, uh, there is Vyakha, there is contradiction there. This is what the Lokayat say. How can you say that just because it is ancient, it is Vedic? Wrong. Completely wrong. All right. So, uh, and this is English translation for those who don't know. I mean, it's not a good translation by Cowell. It says that the authors of the Ved were buffoons, snails, and demons, and so on. That's what the Lokayat is to say. All right. So, this cannot be, you cannot say Vedic just to justify that you want to teach this, or you will say everything, you twist the meaning of the word to any extent. You can't do that. It's wrong. And it is doing great disservice by uh, just doing something. You want to do something, don't justify it like that. So anyway, the point is there is no evidence that Vedic math is ancient. It is not found in any Indian text from Vedanga Yudhish. I have all the texts with me on my laptop just now if anybody wants to see. Until the Yukti Deepika, across 3,000 years, there is not a single mention of it anywhere in any text, traditional Indian text. It came from somewhere, all right. It is useful for mental arithmetic, but it is not there in any traditional Indian text. Between minus 1500 Vedanga Yotesh to plus 1500 Nilkant Arivati Bhashti. Or Yukti Bhasha, or Yukti Deepika, or whatever you have. So, the arithmetic has taught currently what we teach, which you say that is of Indian origin. It went from India to Europe and came back. And I have a paper on that. It's very well known. They only call Arabic numerals. What are the Arabic numerals? They meant from Al Farizmi. So it's described here, and Al Farizmi wrote Hisab al Hind. So it went from India to Europe and came back. That's what you teach is of Indian origin, and that is responsible for the efficiency of Indian arithmetic and for the inefficiency of Roman arithmetic, which is why they abandoned it. All right. So 
it has a very limited use. All right, you can do mental calculations efficiently. I have no problem with that. That's like, all right, that's good. Do that. So it is good for mental calculations, and maybe you want to use it in competitive tests, but the purpose of education is not to pass competitive tests. That is what colonialism taught us, that the only value of education is to pass a competitive test and get a job. That's not what education is about. And that's certainly not what the Vedas is about. It's about ultimate knowledge, not about getting a job, not about passing a competitive test. So let's not demean that, right? So teach and mental arithmetic, but don't call it Vedic. Now, the point is, is there any other harm? There is other harm, because you are getting rid of Indian Ganit. And let me say that Africans understand that it has revolutionary potential. So it can clean and enlarge this. This is a talk that I gave on 1st of June, which is uh, on the, uh, can you see the title? Yeah, where is it? Uh, right, it should be somewhere, revolutionary consequences, maybe higher up. Yeah, you can read it, make, make it larger, please. Yeah, they recognize, because they are looking for freedom in South Africa, they have been oppressed. They are looking for a revolutionary uh, uh, this thing. They recognize that this has potential for 21st century technology. They understand that. We don't. Why not? Why are we so against our own tradition? All right. I'm also giving a talk on this uh, on calculus, Indian calculus, uh, in uh, on the 25th. I think I have a distinct for that. So uh, colonialism taught us just to ape the West. And so, uh, well, we it does not threaten the West. If you do something revolutionary, it threatens the West. Let's be very clear about it. You're doing elementary arithmetic at school, school level. Nobody is bothered. You are going to do calculus differently. Their hegemony over knowledge is threatened. Their control of mathematics is threatened. All right, and it is a major threat. Because they have been saying for the last so many centuries, Newton discovered calculus and so on. Complete falsehood. But not only falsehood, he did not understand it. And what you are teaching today, limits and so on is wrong. I also taught it. I was a professor in mathematics. I used to teach formal mathematics. I used to teach real analysis. But it is wrong. It is not the right way to do things. All right. So it is very useful. And um, let me just give you a simple, can you please enlarge this? So these are some of the things we are talking about. We are talking about uh, yeah, uh, ballistic missiles, supposing we want to calculate. Now I do this in my calculus without limits course. You can't do that with Vedic mathematics because you are going to solve differential equations. You can't solve differential equations. You can do mental error. All right. Now you want to do statistics properly. If you want chatbots or any AI bot or any machine learning program, it's all about statistics. If you don't understand statistics, and if you start doing statistics today, they will start with the big measure, they'll start with the probability space. That's how I learned it. A standard Borel probability space. And if you ask what that is, then most people don't know. And if they don't know, then they struggle. You look at all the statistical algorithms, actually, they are very simple algorithms. You don't need to know that. And supposing you want, I gave an example in this lecture I gave in GNU. And I talked, for example, about, well, maybe you look at it, it's a complicated thing. We're looking at levy distributions and so on, stock market and things like that. So you have a problem with doing statistics in the current tradition in formal mathematics. You cannot study stochastic differential equations put up by levy motion. You don't have solutions. You can maximum manage Brownian motion. Quantum technology, you talked about quantum technology. My PhD thesis was on quantum mechanics. All right. Now I am talking about that. You talk. You need probabilities. You need to understand that the probability is based on a different logic. Quantum logic is not the same as two-value logic. It is quasi-truth function. Maybe a bit like Buddhist logic and Jain logic. But yes, what Harry wrote on Jain logic and quantum mechanics. But if you look at my paper on probability, yeah, you will find that I have a book on quantum mechanics. I have not brought it here, uh, which is called. Uh, Time towards a consistent theory. And most important, it's decolonization. We were mentally enslaved today. You know, why do you know limits? Where were the limits? Where does Aryabhat use limits? Where does Nilkam use limits? There's no mention. They don't use an integral sign. They don't use a derivative sign. But they do calculus. And they do it efficiently. They do it well. I'm going to talk about it on the 25th. Please uh, listen to it if you like. All right, I'll give you the link. So here we are. 
and uh, this is not what we want to do. What we want to do is, uh, well, there are these articles, for example, let me show you these articles uh, because California, this is I'm talking about California. So, uh, yeah, so California has banned the calculus, cancelled the calculus because it's too hard. Why is it so hard? Because you're doing limits, because you're doing real numbers. People don't understand real numbers. In J and U, I gave a challenge of 10 rank rupees. I can give it just now again to anybody here. Prove 1 plus 1 equal to 2 in real numbers overnight. To take more than that, one week I reduce the price to one lakh. But you must understand what you're doing. All right, and you must do it using without assuming any result of say, theory. Don't assume, do it directly from the axioms. If you understand it, do it. The way Russell took 328 pages to prove, 378 pages to prove one plus one equal to two. So this offers uh, the possibility of, uh, well, let me show you the second thing, where I said, don't cancel the calculus, make it easy. So when you teach calculus without limits, as I do, I've been doing in various uh, countries and various universities, it becomes extremely easy. But here we are not able to do it. Nobody wants to even talk about it. Nobody understands calculus. Everybody understands arithmetic. So let's talk with the mathematics. I think that's not correct. If you want to talk a strategy, you want to talk about knowledge society, you have to be there, up there, right in front. You can't be talking about these uh, things. Okay, I think that's about it. I have. So we are talking about machine learning. We are talking about artificial intelligence. We are talking about quantum mechanics. The probability is involved there. You are talking about calculus. You are talking about ballistic missiles or whatever else you have in mind. First experiment, simple pendulum. You can't do it with current calculus. It involves Jacobian elliptic functions. They don't teach. The integrals and different derivatives of Jacobian elliptic uh, function because they are not elementary functions and therefore you do science wrong. I have just given a video on that. Take a look. So I have to show this. I have this book. You have this Indian origin of calculus and its transmission to Europe. So this is what the book called Cultural Foundations of Mathematics is about. So I think uh, the important part is. It originated in India, it was transmitted to Europe, and most important part is Europeans didn't understand, just as they did not understand Indian arithmetic. They did not understand, it's not zero. They did not understand negative numbers. They did not understand negative numbers till 19th century. I have given an example, if you take a look at my latest video, De Morgan, Augustus De Morgan, who was a professor at University College London, says negative numbers are evil. He said negative numbers are not possible. And he says that believe that minus 9 is less than 0, it's uh, 10,000 times easier to believe in judicial astrology and in the uh, existence of witches. That's what he says. All right, the book is available on archive. Okay, so I'm giving a talk, as I said, this is the talk on the 25th, which is uh, how and why Europeans stole uh, calculus from India in the 16th century. Same topic, little more advanced. And I will be talking about derivatives and integrals, which don't exist. In the Indian calculus, I mean, you have finite differences and so on, and you have solved you have solutions of differential equations. But you don't need all that stuff that is identified with calculus, calculating formulae for integrals and derivatives. And uh, there is well, I have given you this uh, probability in ancient India already. Uh, I will give you this whole list. I'll give you this whole list. There are a whole lot of courses. All right, these have been done at various levels at the level of uh, undergraduate level, at the postgraduate level also in the University of Science Malaysia. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. I'll, I'll scroll it. Uh, there is a related course on geometry which was done differently in India. And the Sherpa Sutra, you do geometry differently instead of saying we did Pythagorean theorem first. It's not, uh, it, that's not the important point. We did different. I have to talk about that difference. Just saying we did it first, we did the school test says yes, you did it first, but what you did was inferior. That's what the ninth standard school text says. At least read that before you say we did it first. So there is Raju Ganit, which you have because a stream is flexible and therefore you can measure a curved line. That's very important because you have no such thing as trigonometry. You have such a thing as circle metric. A circle is a curved line. Right? You can't do, I ask my students to calculate the sine of 92 degrees, they blink. How can you have opposite side by hypotenuse? 
So how do you have 92 degree in uh, right angle triangle? They don't know. Similarly, statistics for social sciences and humanities, I uh, have that course. I also taught this calculus uh, how humans course in Ambedkar University here. And well, I did uh, various courses on history, philosophy of science also. Now, uh, my mouse is going out of control. Uh, I'm just trying to scroll down. So there's a long literature. This is available. There are popular level articles which are there. Uh, how you have been fooled into accepting Western mathematics as superior. And it is a very major trick of domination. Just as racism was a trick of domination and slavery. And it is directly connected to it. I have uh, talked on that. Euclid must fall. So it's a long story. I'll perhaps talk about it. So it is a trick of domination. By saying we are superior, we did superior mathematics, you copy us, you imitate us, you ape us. That is what we do. Okay, so there are scholarly articles and so on. And I think uh, that's uh, about it. Uh, it's been taught in several countries. It's been taught in India. It's been taught in Malaysia. It's been taught in Iran. And uh, hopefully now in South Africa. So all that I'm saying is, let me summarize. Let's be honest. To teach mental mathematics, by all means, don't call it really. Because that's a selling label. But don't use the name of the way to teach. That's not right. So teach authentic Indian garden. That's very important. Because you're talking about calculus, you're talking about geometry, you're talking about strategy. We are also talking now about have a primary school syllabus. We are also talking about elementary arithmetic. Because Europeans didn't understand it. And that is what made mathematics difficult. Because we ate them. What is difficult about calculus? Limits and real numbers. Why are real numbers difficult? I just told you. 1 plus 1 equal to 2. People don't know. They can't prove it. In real numbers. They don't understand the definition of a real number. Because it involves such complex set theory, such enormous metaphysics. So, that is why it has become like, It's not bad teaching. It is the subject is bad. Subject is complex. It is theologized. And we don't understand it. We think all mathematics is one. We think it is universal. Our ninth standard school text says your mathematics is inferior. Western mathematics is superior. Please read it, class five, uh, class, chapter five of class nine. Okay. All right. I can show you the thing if you are interested. So let's go to Indian Ganesh. At least let us look at the philosophical aspects. Let us compare the two. When the text says that, and the text won't change it. <laughs> Let's do something about it. That is very important. Let's not divert all our resources just to something called Vedic mathematics, which has nothing to do with the way. This is authentic Indian tradition. Let's focus on that. I thank you very much. I'm sorry if I took a lot of time. Thank you. Great. Uh, I think uh, thank you for those uh, verifying our minds, you know, because you will get uh, carried away. And uh, one has to be, as you said, objective and authentic. So, Indian Ganit. Bharati Ganit. Bharati Ganit is I right. think, uh, and maybe we should uh, reinvent a title so that that becomes a Indian Ganit is a good uh, title. But some people say, Ki, is there Indian Ganit? Is there a European Ganit? Is this Ganit? Is, that, is, that, is, yeah, yeah. You just put, you just said that. But then people would say that is there? We all converge into something. What Ganit? Uh, whether you can have many Ganits? Uh, no, 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 no. Or is it just a different way of? Uh, no. Philosophical difference here. If you see the Nyaya Sutra, Nyaya Sutra will say Pratyaksha is a Praman. All right, it will say Anuman is a Praman, and it will say Uman is a Praman, and it will say Shabd is a Praman. All right, now Pratyaksha Praman is what is used. If Aryabhat wants to uh, talk about, uh, let us say, it's a level the ground. So, how do you level the ground? You put uh, water and see, that's how mystery does it. But this is an empirical method. Now, empirical methods, empirical proofs are prohibited in formal math. Because this was developed by the church. It was a church method of reasoning. The church can't manage uh, facts. So church invented a method of reasoning without facts. And we have not understood it. And said it's superior. Everything is superior. Whites are superior. West is superior. We are all superior. So there is nothing superior. Can we at least discuss it? Can you get anybody? I am trying for the last uh, seven years, eight years. Can you get any mathematics professor from anywhere in the world to come and discuss? Manjul Bhakka is here. He is visiting. Bangalore, he can come. I am willing to discuss. Yeah, you had invited him, but he had to leave for Bangalore. Uh, no, I am willing to discuss with anybody, any professor in Delhi University. I think what probably we require is if one is an authentic history of Indian maths. Uh, no, uh, history is mixed with philosophy. There is a trick. Mixed with, with philosophy. Who, 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 
जो विद्वान लोग हैं वो देखें सी व्हाट आई अंडरस्टैंड जो दिस 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 डायलॉग इज हैपनिंग इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ हिस्ट्री दे से योर वी आर नॉट हिस्ट्री वी आर इतिहास सो वी आर नॉट 